Well, now we come to what is probably the least understood or perhaps the most misunderstood section of the oscilloscope. It's called the trigger section. Think about a video game for a second. You know how in a video game we have a sync signal, a synchronization signal. It's a separate wire that comes from the computer board and goes into the monitor and keeps the monitor synchronized with the computer. Without the sync signal, the display would be completely useless. It would be completely scrambled and you wouldn't be able to tell what's on the screen. Well, in order for an oscilloscope to show a stable waveform like this, it also has to be synchronized. Somehow the sweeping beam has to be synchronized with the signal that's coming into the probe. Unlike a video game, there is no separate sync wire coming from the signal you're looking at to the oscilloscope. You only have the one probe and it carries the signal from the circuit you're working on to the scope. What the scope triggers on is changes in voltage. What the oscilloscope is looking for is some change in voltage, either a rising voltage or a falling voltage, like the rising voltage here on what is known as the leading edge or the positive slope of the waveform, or a falling voltage as it is here on the trailing edge or negative slope of the waveform. On the oscilloscope right here, there's a slope select button. And when the, the button is out, it triggers on the positive slopes. And when the button is in, it triggers on the falling or the negative slopes. There's a level control over here. And this is an extremely important knob. The level control sets the level at which the oscilloscope will trigger. That is to say, it sets the voltage level at which the oscilloscope is looking for a change in voltage. If the level control is, is not set properly, the trace will run. Usually, it's just a matter of slowly rotating the level control back and forth until the oscilloscope triggers properly and the display is stabilized on the front of the screen. In this oscilloscope, when the display is triggered properly, the triggered LED lights up. There are three push button switches that set the trigger mode for the A sweep. In the normal setting, the oscilloscope will not show a baseline until it is triggered properly. You will not see anything at all. As I rotate the level control, watch what happens as the scope triggers. As soon as the oscilloscope triggers, the display comes up. The normal setting is your most accurate setting. That is to say, you won't see anything unless it is properly triggered as it is here. There's also an auto trigger. In the auto trigger mode, if the display is not stabilized, that is to say, um, if the display is running like this, you will still see the baseline. You'll see, you'll see this. You'll see something on the screen. It won't be stabilized until you trigger it with the level control. And again, you'll notice that the trigger LED uh, lights up when it's triggered. Plus, of course, the display uh, stabilizes on the front of the screen. To be honest with you, this is the setting you'll use most of the time. Um, if you leave the scope in the normal mode, it can be very confusing because you don't see anything at all unless it's triggered properly. You, you don't know where the beam is un unless you hit the beam finder and see what's going on. It can be really confusing. So you leave it in the auto mode unless you have trouble triggering it. If you have trouble triggering it where the display runs like this, you may want to put it in the normal mode, set the trigger properly until the display does come up, um, and then you can set it back in the auto mode and it'll be properly triggered. Uh, I really caution you against leaving it in, in the normal trigger mode because you're back to square one with 
uh, oh my god, where's my trace? Where's my baseline? Where's my display? What the heck is this scope doing? I can't use a scope. Uh, this is a very common mistake. Just leave it on auto trigger and, um, and, and, and you'll be in much better shape. Stay away from the normal trigger setting. There's another button called the single sweep reset. When I press the single sweep reset button in, the ready light comes on. Then when the oscilloscope receives a pulse, and I'll just uh, trigger it by touching uh, the end of my finger to this probe, it triggers the oscilloscope and it makes one pass from left to right. Then you need to reset the oscilloscope again and the ready light comes on and again on the next pulse it makes one pass from left to right. That ready light is very important because without the ready light you wouldn't know if uh, you were still waiting for a pulse or if you had just missed it. So as soon as you press the reset light, uh, reset button, the ready light comes on and then on the very next pulse it makes one sweep from left to right. Uh, this is also used uh, quite often in, in more sophisticated lab situations where uh, you want to take a photograph of the screen. To be honest with you, in the coin op business you will rarely use this function. By pressing in both the auto and the normal trigger button. This oscilloscope triggers on what's known as TV fields. That 16.6 .6 millisecond period that it takes the monitor to scan one complete pass of the screen from the top to the bottom. That's really important since we use the oscilloscope to do lots of monitor work. Um, uh, the ability to trigger on fields is important. If your oscilloscope doesn't have the field setting, um, it, it's entirely possible to use the oscilloscope simply on a slow setting like five milliseconds per division and adjust the level control to trigger it properly. But it's real handy to have the field setting on your scope because that way when you want to work on a monitor and look at one entire field, you're telling the oscilloscope, hey, this is the kind of signal I'm giving to you and this is what I'd like you to trigger on. So the oscilloscope will ignore any higher frequency components in the, in the video signal, such as horizontal components, and just look at the vertical components, the field signal. For triggering on television lines, this monitor uses the normal setting or the auto setting. Uh, other oscilloscopes will have a separate setting for TV line, which is the horizontal frequency, uh, 63 microseconds, or TV field, which is the vertical frequency, 60 hertz or 16.66 .66 milliseconds. Remember the level control for the A sweep. And remember that we have two sweeps, an A sweep and a B sweep. Well, there's a similar level control here for the B sweep. And remember, the level controls the voltage level at which the triggering occurs. Again, like with the uh, level control for the A sweep, um, the B trigger control is generally just rock back and forth until you obtain a stable display. This control tells the oscilloscope where to look for its trigger signal. The oscilloscope can trigger on the signal coming in channel 1, the vertical input channel 1, or it can uh, look to channel 2 for its trigger source, or this oscilloscope has a, a setting known as the vertical mode. And in the vertical mode, it looks at both channels, channels 1 and 2. And finally, you can set the source for the trigger. That is to say, where the, the oscilloscope will be looking for its trigger signal. The source for the trigger can either be internal, line, or external. Let's take a look at the internal first. And the internal refers to the two vertical inputs, channels 1 and 2. When the selector is set for internal, we can tell the oscilloscope where to look for the, uh, the trigger signal by selecting either channel 1 or channel 2. Uh, in this oscilloscope, there's also another setting called vertical mode. And in the vertical mode, the oscilloscope selects both channels 1 and channel 2 as its trigger source. Where would we want to use this? Well, this can be really handy when troubleshooting monitors. For example, in a monitor, 
everything is synchronized together. Everything is synchronized with the incoming sync signal. You can connect channel 2, the probe on channel 2, to the incoming sync signal, the signal coming from the logic board or the pattern generator, and select the source for the sync to be channel 2. It doesn't matter what we're looking at on channel 1 now. We can do whatever we want, we want with, with channel 1. And, um, sorry, here's channel 1 right here. And uh, uh, the oscilloscope will remain synchronized on whatever's coming in channel 2. So you set the sync using the level control. You set the sync on channel 2. The sync input is down here on channel 2. And you can do whatever you want, scoping various parts of the monitor, different circuits on channel 1, and you will not have to readjust the level control or adjust the triggering in any way. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. If the source is set on channel 2, that's what the scope is triggering on, no matter what we're showing here on the display for channel 1. The line setting for the A trigger source, the line setting refers to the AC power line. The oscilloscope actually gets its trigger signal from the AC power plug, the same plug that powers the entire oscilloscope. For example, right now I'm looking at uh, a sample of the sine wave, that's our AC power line, but you can see it's moving all around on the front of the screen. As soon as I flip the source to line, it's going to trigger on the AC line input. Since what I'm looking at is the AC power line, it has to trigger when I set the trigger source to the line input. You don't use the line input very often as a trigger source, primarily when you're working on power supplies. In linear power supplies, you may want to look at just the AC ripple, the AC hum or the AC ripple that uh, naturally uh, occurs in, in, uh, in linear power supplies. If you just want to look at the ripple and you want to trigger on that, all you have to do is set the trigger source to the line trigger input and any ripple on the power supply line will stay absolutely synchronized or absolutely triggered and stable on the front of the, of the oscilloscope. There's even a way that we can couple another external trigger source to the oscilloscope. There's another jack here. That's the external trigger source. And with the selector knob set on external, we can couple another signal, a signal that's completely separate from the two vertical inputs to the oscilloscope and trigger on that. Now, the oscilloscope will not display that signal in the normal way that it displays channels one and two. The trigger view button enables me to see what the oscilloscope is triggering on. Uh, for example, here I have it set on internal source. Right now I'm showing you channel 1. Let's display with the trigger view button, let's display the trigger and see what the scope is triggering on. And when I press the button in, what you see is this. Well, this is what's on channel 2. Right now I have the trigger source set on channel 2. So naturally, when I press trigger view, it shows me the trigger source, which is channel 2. If the source is set on channel 1, then the trigger view will show me, um, uh, will show me channel 1, which is what we're looking at. Even if I'm looking at channel 2, this will show me channel 1. Remember what you're looking at with the vertical input selector, channel 1, channel 2, or both channels 1 uh, and channel 2 has absolutely nothing to do with the source of your trigger. You can trigger on 2, but look at 1. See, I'm triggering on 2. This is what's coming in channel 2, but I'm only looking at channel 1. Uh, of course, I can look at both of them and trigger on either channel uh, 2 or channel 1. Um, or I can just be looking at channel 2 and trigger on channel 1 or channel 2. Uh, remember that the trigger has nothing to do with what you're looking at. In the vertical mode, you set what you want to look at, channel 1 or channel 2 or both. 
and in the trigger setting, in the trigger mode, you select the source. This is very important because um, I, I see people making common mistakes where they have a problem.